Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. I wanted to make a second video. I've already made one this year, but I wanted to make a second video in this time period where we have new icons coming onto the market with the prime icons, um, base icons going out of packs. And I wanna talk about how to trade with these icons in FIFA 20, especially as we head into the team of the year time frame and post team of the year. What can you expect from these cards in terms of like a general uh, price direction and also how do you trade with these cards and make big profit off them because there are tons of ways you can trade with these cards they're so fun to trade with because it's trading with some of the biggest some of the most expensive and some of the most you know i guess i could say iconic uh cards in the game aka the icons so uh again i did a video on this earlier if you want to check out that video that link is going to be in the description it goes more in depth on some of the general trends but this one's going to be be again a little bit more dedicated to the stuff relevant to this time frame right around team of the year prime icons just dropped in packs we're going to be looking at a lot of prime icons because right now these cards are rare on the market they've only been in packs for a couple of days and they're super rare and that means they fluctuate a ton because there's still demand for these cards on this game right people want to try these cards people want to use them the primes just came out it's, it's almost like a new promo right people uh have these new cards that they're seeing that are released into the game and they they want to see how much they're going to go for and they want to see how much they can buy them for and try them out with the new stats upgraded cards most of the primes that come out have, are the best versions of each card so uh that there is some extra demand to those cards there so again prime icons just came out and, you know, re referencing back to my first video, uh, a lot of the trading techniques, like what we do with icons is still going to be the same. You're going to hear me say a few things, but with these prime icons, it's a little bit different in terms of the price general direction that we are heading. So I haven't been trading with a, pr a ton of prime icons myself just yet, but I've been watching a lot of them. And again, that's one of the most important things when you're trading with icons, as maybe we cover some of the more basic things again, really quick here in the beginning of the video is really starting to understand fluctuations and knowing that these cards are not always going to stay around the same price and kind of just realizing when a price is low, when a price is high, where the card sells at at some hours, where the card sells at at other hours. So first example I want to use is this prime Coleman card, right? This is a new icon in FIFA 20, this center back, and he has a CDM version. Oh, no, he's got center back versions across the board, I think, right? Yeah, the 85 and the 88 are both center backs, but he looks like a CDM almost. Uh, but this card is new to the game of FIFA, right? He's a new icon for this year in FIFA 20. And this card just came out into packs a couple days ago. I want to take a look at this fluctuation. As you saw on my transfer list, there was one that went on bid there for 1.321. So 1.32 mil. What does he usually sell for, right? So 1.5, 1, 1.36, 1, 1.4 1, on Saturday. And then yesterday, 1.4, 1, 1.3, 1, 1.26. 1, and now back up to 1.42. 1, and currently he's 1.45. So as you can see for both of these days, and this is kind of concurrent with a lot of the prime icons, most of the time they are lowest during the around the content drop each day like 6 7 p.m uk is when these cards are kind of the lowest on the market because there's oftentimes packs coming out pack supply sbcs lightning rounds depending on if we're a promo or not um and there's just more players in the game by, like selling their cards up um onto the market so that's why you see some of these prices dip down around 6 p.m uk um and that's general for a lot of these cards right i mean a lot of these cards change in price but uh, they fluctuate, but uh, the, for the general like buying and selling icons, if there's like a general time period, a lot of times you can buy it around the content drop time, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. UK, and then sell them overnight into the morning UK time because they do rise up. Uh, as you can see, he was one three, he was one three six, rose up to almost one five in the morning, then he dropped back down to one two six, and now he's back up to one four five. And I'm recording this at like the the late night, early morning uh, EU time. Uh, when I'm recording this. So, uh, Coman was what, 126 today. So, this one that just went on bid for 1.32, I probably wouldn't buy that. But you might think, ooh, that's a really good deal, right? Because currently the cheapest Coman on the market is around 1.4 mil, right? Let's go prime Coman. There he is. He is 1.467 is the cheapest on the market with a 145 open bid. So I'm going to watch this 145 open bid and see if that gets bid on because that would be kind of crazy if that actually got bid on. He was 126. Again, he was 126 around 1.3 earlier today. 
And if I see this get bought at 145, uh, that would make me feel like I, I kind of missed a deal here with this uh, 132 getting off the market on bid. And that's another thing. These cards on bid can be very, very good to pick up, especially late at night when there's not as many people on the market. But again, that's just a testament to how much these prime icons are fluctuating right now. Now, as we head into team of the year, again, I talked about their price, a general like price movement for a lot of these cards is probably going to be going downwards, right? You've already seen some of these cards prices trend downward in the past few days as they've only been out in packs for a couple days. Uh, just because they're con they're continuing to get packed and there's more supply of those cards coming onto the market. Uh, so that's something, ooh, there we go. There's an undercut, just a little bit. Let's see if that sells. 1599 right there. Look what this one just went for on bid literally 10 minutes ago before that 1599 got listed. 1676. Let's go back over to Footbin for this one. Where has this card been at? So this is why it's fun to icon trade, right? You got to add the cards to your transfer targets and literally just watch them and see where people buy, right? That's the fun part. So we, middle of the day today, he was 159 and 175, 17. What about you? What about Saturday? 15 flat. Wow. Okay. So it looks like 15 flat is kind of the lower range for him. And he almost sells up to 17, which is kind of what we witnessed here with the 167 being sold. So I'm going to watch another Hugo Sanchez. I'm going to watch this 159, which I already did. There's a 168 and there's also a 165. I'm going to watch these and see if they sell during the hour. Again, that's basically getting used to the icon trading is again, knowing the fluctuations of the price, knowing where they sell, knowing where you can buy. And of course, factoring in the tax, but that I know I just mentioned going into team of the year, a lot of these prices, we we're going to look at some cards from last year really quick. A lot of these prices, especially for the prime cards are going to continue to drop as we get closer and closer to team of the year, right? So I've been looking at Pirlo. He just went on bid for 1.2. There's a, there's a decent amount of him up on the market though. He's got some supply, but one just did go on bid for 1.2 and then 1.15, one went on bid. Uh, but Footpin says he was 1.15 earlier today. So these are at 124. I'm gonna add that to my transfer targets and see what happens with that one. If that one gets a sale, it will be interesting to watch. Um, but I'm, let's go back to FIFA 19 really quick and look at a couple cards and what happened as we got close to team of the year. So of course I'm looking at some very meta, uh, and obviously like a, a middle range card too, with the second card we'll look at, but this first card Del Piero, right? And that, this is, I'm talking about this for you guys because I want you to know that this is one thing you want to keep in mind when you're trading icons, the general trend of the market. Again, as we're heading into team of the year, a lot of these guys are going to get sold off as people get coins. They get ready for team of the year to try to go buy a team of the year card uh, in place of some of their icons. That's something that I think a lot of people do as they just expect the content, right? Last year, from January 1st, Del Piero was 1.269 million coins. Team of the year started, all the packs started. And boom, he drops down to, by the end of the, the first week of Team of the Year, January 10th, he's 1.13, right? So he's dropped 150K. Then literally, right after Team of the Year ends, the man rebounds back up to 1.269. Basically the exact same price where he was right before Team of the Year started. So you're going to see these cards drop down during Team of the Year. There's People know that this price drop in the icons is coming, so you'll see a little bit of a sell-off heading into Team of the Year. But again, these cards get packed so stinking much during team of the year because of all the packs that are open. So uh, that is, again, here's Makalele's middle card, a new icon last year. January 1st last year, he was 692,000 coins, dropped down to 630. I mean, there's probably undercuts during lightning rounds. This card was 600K flat. And then boom, what does he rise to right after team of the year? 794K, almost 800,000 coins after being 690 down to 600, 630 back up to 800k so knowing which cards are used on this game and which cards you're going to be able to like if you want to make a team from these icons the post team of the year market rise with all the coins on the market is very similar to black friday we're going to talk about more of that in upcoming videos but that same thing is going to happen with these icons right people are going to sell off these primes that are new to the market and they're even going to sell off some of the babies that are out of packs right like the prime example is carlos alberto Carlos Alberto's baby card, which is a position change. That's Roberto Carlos, wrong one. Maybe I'll just type Alberto and find his name. Yeah, that would work. There we go. 87 rated, not 88. 87 rated Carlos Alberto. 
This card was like 800k flat before it went out of packs and before the primes went in. He's now 850. So he's up like 50k. And this is weekend league sell-off time when I'm recording this. So he was even higher. Um, but this is a, a type of card, again, that you would want to watch in the team of the year sell-off and just kind of know that, okay, as I'm trying to trade these cards and as I might be trying to flip these cards on a daily basis, their prices might be trending downwards. So just be careful with the deals that you get and be careful in knowing that team of the year is coming and that has a large effect on these icons. Now, I also want to address some of the prime icons that are extinct. I would say, I would say be very, very careful when you're trading with prime icons that are extinct or don't have price range updates yet. So like uh, Henrik Larsson, he does not, his prime, I think it's like a 1 million is uh, the max price for this guy. And uh, he's extinct right now. Another one is Kaka's prime card. He's extinct at like 3 million. I think Dal Gleesh is also extinct at 3 million. This is like risky business messing around with the price ranges and these cards that they're extinct. Hullet is 5 million, which doesn't make sense because his middle card is over 5 million coins. Uh, so that price range really doesn't make too much sense. Yeah, Hullet's middle card right now is 5.2 and his prime card is a price cap of 5 mil. So that stuff will get sorted soon, I'm sure. But just something to be very, very careful with. And those cards aren't going to get popping up on, on the market very much anyway to begin with. So again, you just want to be very, very careful with those. But again, when you're looking to trade these cards, again, the primes are going to drop in price into team of the year. They're going to get packed a ton during team of the year. And a lot of them are going to rebound after if they're meta and usable cards. Um, but again, if you're looking to, to trade with these cards on the daily, just literally just add as many of them as you want to your, to your transfer list. Uh, like I just added all those Hugo Sanchez. Uh, out of the pure lows, like I'm watching these cards as they get listed and as they get bought too, take notice, right? So Carlos Puyol, the prime, Carlos Puyol, just got bought at 835. The next cheapest on the market is 899, right? 899 right here for a fresh one. I'm gonna add that to my transfer targets and see if it sells. This Lineker was uh, went unbought at 930. There's a, another one listed here at 900. I've added that one, hasn't sold yet, right? So basically you can learn so much from watching these prices this Zambrato went for 143. Ooh, there's a 145. And it's not fresh, but it's it's uh, first owner tradable. So this Zambrato just went 143. And this is literally what you can do to learn the card's price, right? This is what I do every time I see a sale on an icon that I was watching. So this Zambrato went for 143. What's he been doing the past couple days? Past couple days, the hourly graph and footbin. Wow. He was 1.1. 1 .1. 1.12 on Saturday, 1.2, and then today, he was 1.3. Wow, man, this is insane, bro. All right, that's good to know. So this Zambrato was 1.3 earlier today. On Saturday, it was even cheaper at 1.1, and now he sells out 1.43. That's crazy, all right? That is crazy, and that's good to know. Uh, his price has actually gone up since he first came out. So somebody who, ooh, 1.1, Ooh, look at that deal. Somebody got right there on a pure low, 1.1. We know that sells at 1.2. We know that that card sells at 1.2. So if you bought that at 1.107, I missed that bid. I could have actually got on that bid, man. That is maybe a missed out deal right there that I could have been watching uh, as I was making this video. But uh, seriously, this stuff, like adding them to your transfer targets is so huge. Watching the market and knowing these cards' prices and fluctuations and what they get bought for and what they sell for. And you literally just continue to make mental notes on this stuff and watching these cards and especially adding the open bids, right? Because open bids can tell you a lot about a card. Ooh, one, two, three. There's another slight undercut on Pirlo uh, right there. So again, watch these cards, use Footbin to your advantage. Footbin can't tell you the whole story though, right? That's why I really recommend uh, watching these cards, putting them on your transfer targets, or I know a lot of people make spreadsheets, right? So some people actually do Excel spreadsheets when they're watching cards like this Pirlo, they will put down sell prices on the day and they'll also just kind of watch cards and see, okay, it was bought at this price, it was sold at this price on this day. And that way you can honestly watch the card over time too, right? If you're watching the card every day, it's a good place to track some of those card prices. So Excel spreadsheets is probably a decent place where you could do that as well. And again, if you're looking to find cards to watch, set up a filter, right? Get to the 59th minute and that's a great way to learn prices as well. You don't have to pick individual icons like I had kind of on my transfer list right there. I'm gonna go over here and um, basically set up a little filter, 800,000 coins minimum to 1.2. That's a small enough filter. 
that filters out a lot of cards, expen more expensive than 1.2 and cheaper than 800K that I can get to the 59th minute pretty quick. And that's what I want to do. I want to get to the 59th minute pretty quick. And that's a good way to learn card prices to see what they're being listed at at the 59th. That's also a great way to pick up deals, okay? The 59th minute icon sniping is a fantastic, fantastic way to pick up deals. I'm gonna make this filter open up a little bit and see what I can get. Maybe in some of the lower range cards. Filters are kind of weird and they, they fluctuate all over the place. So that's something to, to keep in mind as well is really watch the filters. So this Ferdinand for 714, there's one at 720 as you see right there. So that's probably not a deal. And that's, this is really a great place to just learn card prices. Again, spend some time on the 59th minute, find some filters that work for you. Use the basic chemistry style for some filters as well. Um, like trading with icons, is, it's just fun, man. It really is just fun, especially the rush that you get when you get on that 59th minute uh, and, and look at some of those icons like that. During lightning rounds, this is a fantastic filter to do. You can open up the filter a lot if you've got a lot of coins. Um, the basic chem style would be your basically what you're searching for during lightning rounds is a card that is getting packed fresh listed up onto the transfer market right away for somebody that just wants the coins and they might undercut or really not know the price of that card and undercut big time which could make you possibly a potential deal to buy the card and flip it so here's a fresh 91 ballot for 1985 which looks to be a little bit of an undercut so I haven't seen this card at all yet on foot. So I'm going to go over here to Footbin and look at Prime Michael, uh, Michael Ballack and see what he's been going for. So this 1988 shows on Footbin, which is actually a different listing than one that we found. But boom, look at this. He was 176 earlier today. And now he's up to 199. He's actually around 2 million. What about Saturday? He was over 2 million. So that's crazy. Like 176 earlier today. And this one right now getting listed Fresh first owner on the 59th was 1.9. It's the cheapest on the market. So you know what? I'm going to add that to my transfer targets and see if it sells. And that's knowledge that I know. Okay, at this time, that card sold at that price. Again, some general tips when trading Psycons. Be bold, okay? Have confidence, all right? Watch the card's price. If you've done the research, if you've watched the card, don't hesitate too much to put your coins into these. Whether you're trading with like 85 Coman, who right now goes for like 200,000 coins, right? It's, it's the same strategy and the same procedure for any card, any icon card from 200K to 10 mil. You're looking for the undercuts, you're looking for open bids, and you're watching to see what that card sells at at certain hours and then other hours when it's maybe higher up, the fluctuations of where that does sell. And the thing that you have with icons, I feel like there's a little bit of a safety net with them. It seems risky, it seems huge, and like a massive um, flip to put a lot of your coins into, like to put 1.5 million coins into one flip seems like a lot. Um, by the way, that Hugo Sanchez sold at 1599. Intriguing, intriguing, intriguing. So. It seems like a big thing to put all of your coins into a flip like this. But if you think about it, these cards are super duper rare on the market and there's always desire and there's always demand for icons, right? People want icons in their teams. They provide chemistry links to anybody in your squad and they're just legends of old, right? There's so many people that play FIFA purely for the icon aspect of it. So that's what I would say. It seems really risky, but whatever you bought that icon for, you'll probably be able to sell it uh, at, you know, if within the next couple of days, if unless we have like a, a repeatable icon pack coming out, then you might see a, a dip in price, but some of that stuff is unexpected. Um, so of, of, aside from a, like some pretty extreme circumstances, circumstances, you shouldn't be looking at like a huge loss in coins on icons. Uh, just keep in mind tax is there and you can make a certain a little bit of a loss on that But these cards are honestly generally safe to trade with because they're so rare in the market There's always demand for the ones that are good in game and that people like to use in this game and uh, Yeah, so that's why I don't have as much fear at trading with these cards as I used to uh, Because they you know what they're just pretty rare and they're legends of old they're icons for a reason and they have those special perks in game which is why people buy them and people shell out the big coins for them so it seems like you're you're entering yourself into a scary situation putting 1.5 billion coins on one card even if that's like all your coins at the moment but you know you can sell them at 1.7 then have some confidence in that all right have some confidence and of course when you're listing the icons as well you don't have to be the cheapest on the market uh if you're on ps4 
Uh, that's what I would say to those. I mean, like maybe list at the second or third cheapest because if it's a very valuable icon, like I would say of these cards that I looked at, this uh, center back Desai card would be pretty valuable. A lot of people would want to um, use this card in the game. Pirlo is a new icon this year. Hugo Sanchez. It looks like this prime version since it's new on the market. A lot of people want to use this one. Know the icon that you're trading with. And uh, you don't always have to be the cheapest because one icon sells, another one sells. Uh, and then boom. Wow, 1655 just sold for Hugo Sanchez, man. This card is being sold a lot. A lot of people are looking at this card, which is crazy. That's crazy, crazy. That's crazy. That's insane. But again, don't be scared to trade with these. Have confidence, okay? If you've done your research, if you watch the fluctuations, you know where the card sells at, buy the card, get into the flips. They're so fun to trade with and they can be massive, massive money makers. Speaking of massive, massive money makers, I want to leave you with this tweet that I saw today. Of course, Zidane is one of the most rare cards on the market at the time when I'm recording this video. One of my friends and fellow trader on FIFA 20, Chatty, got this uh, Zidane today at 1 million coins flat. Boom, right here. Somebody, pa somebody pa packed it and they used it, played some games, listed it up on the market. He bought it for 10, oh, you can't see it. You can't see it, it's below my face cam. There it is right there, 10 million coins for this card right here. And what did he sell it for? He sold it for 13.95. The man made over 3 million coins after tax. Those are the kind of deals that you can have on some of these icons, all right? So let that motivate you. Let that motivate you. Get on the 59th minute for the icons. Get in the bids and have some fun with these cards, all right? Try some things out. Try them. Get some deals. Get on the bids. It's fun. It really is. Hopefully this, guy's, or hopefully this video helped you out. Uh, with the prime icons, especially as we head into team of the year, maybe a little bit of a price drop. Um, but of course, just with trading icons in general, maybe some some of you guys needed a confidence boost or a little bit of a methodology change uh, or, you know, just some tips and tricks again on how to trade with these. But I do hope this video helped you guys out, especially with the primes uh, and the time frame that we are in. If you did enjoy it, smash the thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions. And of course, subscribe to the channel. If you're new, it's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.